Let's talk about the most efficient way to edit your video podcast by setting up a multicam sequence within Premiere Pro. So this is what I'm going to be showing you how to set up in this video. You are going to have various options that you want on the screen that you can cut between you fully on the screen, your guest fully on the screen, variation of everyone on the screen or whatever it is that you want. However you want to get creative, my friend, I will show you how to make it happen. I'm Amanda Horvath and on this channel I help eliminate the obstacles to getting you sitting where I'm sitting right now in front of the camera sharing your message with the world. So if you are ready to show up authentically online then be sure to subscribe and check out the helpful resources that are linked in the description below. Now before we hop into the editing part of this video, I wanna very quickly cover how to record your remote interviews because this is absolutely key to having a great video edit. By far my favorite program to do this is Riverside and I wanna walk you through why that is very quickly. So this is the back end of Riverside. All you do is you set up your studio, you say whether or not you are using your headphones, you can click join studio and boom, here we are. Let's take off double Amanda and just make it screen only. There we go, flow in with this. And whenever you're actually talking to your person, what you're going to do, or before you get on the interview, you're gonna copy this link, you're gonna shoot this link that way, they're gonna pop up on the screen here and you're gonna hit record. Now the reason that this tool is so amazing compared to Zoom or any other platform that you might use to record your interviews is because it's gonna save the local file on your computer as well as their computer that does not have to deal with the buffering of being online with someone and it's gonna have the highest resolution for recording possible compared to any of the other ones that I've found. So once you hit stop recording, those files will continue uploading. And if we go back to my recordings, you'll see all of the different recordings that I have done. So we're gonna be editing this project file here. So the way if you do use Riverside that you're going to get your files out of Riverside is there's many different ways, but you can go here, download high quality tracks, or a very efficient way to do it is to actually export a Premiere Pro project file. This is going to take your files and sync them together and create an XML file that you can import into Premiere Pro. Like I said, this is a super cool tool and you definitely do not wanna miss out on it. So I will be sure to link that in the description below for you to check out for your next interview. So just to pick up from getting the XML file downloaded onto your computer, this is the way it comes through as a zip file. And then it comes in a folder with the individual clips as well as the XML file. And this is what you are going to import into Premiere Pro. Now I highly suggest organizing this and putting it into a certain file structure, however you like to organize your files, uh, because once you import this, it will be referencing those files. So I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but I just wanted to point that out. Now let's hop on over to Premiere Pro and chat through how to actually create this sequence. So the very first thing that is going to happen is just going to be that XML file. So in fact, let's go ahead and import that just so you can see what it looks like when it comes in. So it's gonna import the XML file. It's gonna bring in your footage. I already have that, but I'm just gonna show you. It has one of the clips on the top. This is gonna be the interview people. This is gonna be my clip underneath it. And you can see if I turn off this, you can see my clip underneath it. So that is what is going to come through when you export from Riverside. So the question then becomes, how do you take the original file structure and then turn it into this multi-cam sequence with all of the different options set up? Let's walk through that process now. Now, before you even think about touching the sequence, what you wanna think about is what kind of options do you wanna click back and forth between? Now, every interview is gonna be slightly Slightly different. This interview happened to be me interviewing two individuals and because of that I couldn't do a straight split screen of one person on screen and the other person on screen right so I had to approach it a little bit differently. So the general way that you would go about this is having your on-camera portion, their on-camera portion, and a split screen option between the two of them. Luckily this project I needed a couple more options so we can show you how I went about that as well. 
So what we are going to do to get started is you are going to select the top two clips. And the way that I did that is I just hold down option to select those two instead of getting the audio files as well. So hold down option, go like that. And then you hold down option and you are going to drag up. That is going to create two clips right here. And this is going to be the best approach if you are going to create you on camera, another person on camera, and then the two of you guys together. So you have both clips here. You are going to right click and you are going to say nest sequence. And you can name this both on camera or whatever it is that you would like to name it. That is going to create a nested sequence and it's going to create it right here in the project panel. So let me move myself. So right here you can see it says both on camera and when we double click that and I open it up in the sequences, you can see it opened up this project file here or this sequence here, I mean. So the way that we're going to now set this up is we can set this up however we want it to appear on screen. So like I said, this is a little bit of a unique scenario with two people being on screen, but let me show you how you would go about this process. So you're gonna go into the effects controls from the project, you're gonna go over to effects, you're going to type in crop, find the crop. When this clip over here is selected, you're going to double click on that and it's going to open up the crop settings right here. Then you're going to be able to adjust this left, right in order to cut out the video. So let me show you what that does. So I can cut, you can see I'm cutting. So if I just wanted her on camera, right, we'll go to a different frame. Then I would adjust it like that, however I wanted. And then I could go underneath to me and I could do the same thing, double click the crop, and then I could adjust me being on screen by moving my position over left or right. And then I could just, I don't really need to crop mine, but we could crop it if we wanted, like let's say the right, like that. And you could have like a black bar in the middle. You can go back to her clip, you could adjust her a little bit more to be more on screen. You can move her position and adjust it. There's many different options of how you could go about that. If you wanted to have a color added behind there, then you could go into your project file. You could go ahead and create a color mat down here. This dialog would pop up, click OK, choose whatever color fits your fancy. My color is 336699. We'll just name this blue too, because I've already created one drag this underneath your clip and extend it all the way out and you can see that blue line gets right there so you can get creative with however you want this to show up so you could scale each person down on the screen you could create cool graphics you'd have to crop mine if you did that a little bit more right and you can start to see how you can get really creative with whatever angle you would like to have as an option for the multicam. Now at this stage, we have not yet set up that multicam sequence. We are merely thinking about what we want as the options within that multicam sequence. So hopefully that gave you some ideas. If this is resonating with you, please be sure to click that like button, drop your comments below, letting me know as well any questions that might be arising because the more you like this video, the more it gets out to more people and the more awesome videos we can get out into the world and share your message. Yeah, I'm a nerd. So going back to our original sequence here, you can see this both on camera is at the top. We just created it in this way, right? You can do it however you want it to be. Um, don't worry about it for now. So if we wanted to create another version, then you can just repeat that same process select the two clips that you want to use within that new sequence, hold down option, drag it up, nest that sequence, call this option camera three or camera four, whatever it is that you would like to call it. Double click on that, open these up. You can move these down however you want. And then you can go ahead and add the crop effects to each of the individual clips and go ahead and adjust those on screen however you would like. So we can just go ahead and create something very similar to the one we previously did where he's a little bit smaller on screen. You could even take, let's say my clip, you can say command C on that clip, go over here, select my clip, go option command V, 
and paste the attributes. Click OK, and it will crop my camera or my video to be there. And I can just move mine from underneath him and make his the same size, get that blue behind him, drag these up. Now we have his version of him being on screen and I'm doing this very quickly. Another quick tip is that if you turn this on, you can see where the center of the frame is. And if you don't have that set up, then let me show you how to go ahead and do that. Right here, there's this plus icon. You go ahead and click plus and you can choose anything that needs to go down here. I highly suggest while we're here, you might as well grab this red dot and throw it in there. We're going to use that in just a second. Go ahead and click OK, and then whatever you put there will fall there. So the safe margins shows you the middle of the frame. So if I wanted to properly position them, I could get them a little bit better in the frame, you know however, and you can do the same for this other clip. So now let's say you have gone through, you have set up your project file however you want it to be. Now we are actually going to set up the multicam sequence. The way that you are going to do that is to select all of your clips and then go ahead and nest all of those clips together. You can go ahead and name your clip multicam or something like that, click OK. And if you look over here in the project panel, you're gonna see things are becoming unorganized very quickly because we created all of these nested files. So I've already previously put them in a nested folder for the example I showed you at the beginning of the video. But what you can do, create a new folder, call it nested, or just name it too, and drag all of those files into that folder so that you know where they live. So quick recap, you have gone ahead, recorded with Riverside, you've exported that XML file, that brought in a synced file, then you went ahead and duplicated the layers that you wanted to create a variation of and nested that sequence together. So at this stage, you have all the different options of what you want to switch between on the screen. So now we just need to actually set up that multicam sequence. So the way that you are going to do that is that you are going to select what you have just nested and then you right click this and you're gonna say multicam enable. And you can see this changed on the screen here, but the trick to really be able to see this is that you are going to go to this icon right here and you're going to click multicam. That is going to show up all of the different options on the screen. So whenever you are now editing, you're going to be able to click between those. The next step is to actually watch the video and choose what you want on the screen. Now, in order to make sure that the choices that you are making are actually recorded, what you're going to do is in your program window within this, you're going to click on that red button. That is going to turn on you being able to select which one happens on screen. Then you go ahead and you play the video video and she's talking right now so maybe I want her on screen and you know everyone's laughing so I didn't actually create one with everyone on screen for this example but I'm talking right now so let's switch back to me and as I was talking right I I didn't switch fast enough so you'll see when you stopped recording right it created those edits that we selected and if I wanted to go in and redo this I can either click play and I'll say, okay, she's talking on screen. I want that there. All right, now I'm talking. Now let's cut back to them, nodding, go back to me, whatever, right? Pause. So if I ever wanna go back and change one of these, I could always select it here, and then I could just select another one, and it would stay on me. For that. I'm telling y'all this is an absolute game changer when it comes to the speed at which you can edit these videos. Not to mention they'll be extremely engaging because stuff is actually happening on the screen. Quick reminder to grab your Riverside subscription that is linked in the description below to make the most out of this tutorial. Now let's say as you edit your video, you realize, oh my gosh, I definitely need a new webcam and a new microphone because it does not sound as good as I want it to sound. Then I highly recommend checking out this video next. Click on through and I'll see you there.